Oh, this is Scott Bozarth for Sonoran Desert Institute FTT 111 Firearms Inspection and Troubleshooting Class. Uh, instructor is Byron Griffin, Byron Griffin, and uh, this is the Week One Practical Application on May 1st, 2022. Uh, so the first step that we want to do when we're um, going to do a function check on a firearm is to ensure that our bench is safe. Now, my bench happens to also double as my reloading bench, so it's very critical that I go through and make sure that I've removed any live ammunition uh, from the bench so that we can't possibly have a negligent discharge in this firearm. And we'll show, even though uh, this is going to be part of the check, that we are in fact clear and safe. Um, this is a Glock 19 Gen 4, probably one of the most common firearms that we, we see and encounter as gunsmiths or just in general hobbyists. Um, and we're going to be performing a uh, function check on this firearm. Uh, the check will be a three-part check, the initial safety check, the functional check, and then if we were to uh, move on to the third part, we would do a test fire. I'm going to have to simulate that uh, as I don't you know, have a range here at my house that I can film this. So let's just run through the uh, general firearm safety rules before we get started here. We need to always treat every firearm as if it's loaded. Never point a firearm at anything we don't intend to destroy. Know how to safely operate the firearm and how all of its safety features work. Uh, we need to use the appropriate eye and ear protection. Always keep the firearm unloaded until it's ready to use. Live ammunition, as we covered, is not allowed in the work area. You'll see these are actually snap caps or dummy rounds. All right, we're going to be using these in the second part of our functional check. Um, and never leave live ammunition. Uh, never use live ammunition to function check firearms. Use snap caps only. So, again, that is a written rule in the text, and this is what we're going to be using for our uh, function checks. Um, if we were test firing, there's a few more rules that we need to, to adhere to. That's keep your fingers safe and off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Know your target and what's beyond it. And always use caliber correct factory ammunition. We don't want to be doing function checks with some screaming hot hand loads um, or, you know, some even some reduced power loads that might be for a recoil sensitive individual. You know, th that firearm is not necessarily designed to run that ammunition. So we want to use factory loads. All right. So the first thing uh, we want to do, again, I demonstrated it for the video just for to keep people happy at YouTube. But the first thing we're going to do in a real world check is make sure that this firearm is clear and safe. Now, on this pistol, that's going to entail removing the magazine. All right. This was be the, the feed source of ammunition that you would remove. We're gonna open the action and visually, we'll lock it to the rear here. We'll visually ensure that there's nothing in there. And then some people will stick their finger in there. If you trust it, you know, you can uh, put a, let's see, we'll, we'll use a zip tie in this case. You know, we, we know that it goes in there. There's nothing in the muzzle in the chamber of this firearm. All right, so this weapon is in fact clear and safe. Then we're gonna go ahead and cycle the action several times manually, just to ensure, once again, you know, there's nothing stubborn stuck in there that we just didn't get. And then we're gonna lock the action open into the rear. Again, if that can be done on the firearm that you happen to be working on. Uh, now, if by some chance, a customer's firearm, because we would never do this as firearm professionals, but if a firearm were to make its way onto your bench and you went to function check it, and it sure did have live rounds in it, there are firearms that have such as a bolt action with a blind uh, magazine. You know, you can't open it up and dump the rounds out the bottom of the stock. You're gonna have to cycle it as many times as it takes to get all those live rounds out, out of the firearm. In this case, though it's not mentioned in the text, it might be smart to, uh, in the Navy, we had um, clearing barrels. It was basically just a big cylindrical rubber 
tube that you would stick the muzzle of the firearm into when you were being issued for sentry watches and things like that. And when you would turn over your weapons and you would do your clearing procedures into that barrel just in case. You know? So that might be something nice to invest in. If you don't, just make sure it's it, pointed in a safe direction while you're operating the action. Um, and again, once those rounds, if you did get them, if the firearm did have live rounds in them, you're gonna wanna remove them from the work area. That's live rounds. All right, and now we're ready to uh, attempt the, or to uh, engage in the initial dry uh, function safety check. And this is gonna be mostly based on feel. All right, the feel check is just that simple. When I cycle this firearm, does it feel like there's anything binding up anywhere? Does it feel nice and smooth the way that it should? Um, can I feel the unlocking function right there? I can feel that chunk where the, um, where the firearm action actually unlocks. And I know that that's functioning properly. Um, if I insert the magazine, again, we know we have an empty mag. If I insert that magazine, pull it to the rear, it stays locked back, and then I can feel the caulking function. There's my reset. All right, everything feels normal. Now that's part of anything that goes off of feel means that you have to know what a healthy firearm should feel like in order to, to notice anything that is out of the ordinary. So, um, and again, we can feel it when it engages into the locked position. That breech should close and lock into place and I can feel that happening. All right, now phase two, we at phase one is complete here. We can say that we have essentially a, a, a functioning firearm insofar as the action cycles. Now, uh, we're gonna use a visual check and we're gonna use our, our dummy rounds or our snap caps. And what we're gonna be checking here is for proper feeding of the ammunition, extraction and ejection. Um, and that is gonna be done visually by observing the behavior of these snap caps. Now I'm gonna run it nice and slow so that we can watch. We see the breech unlock, the barrel drops down in this particular case. All right, our slide comes all the way back, picks up around, enters it into the chamber as it should. Oh, and look here. All right, just because I was riding the slide down slowly to observe it, it didn't wanna lock all the way into place. Now, I can actually, since I know this is dummy round, test fire, all right. Round ejects. Let's do that a little bit slower so that we can verify that in fact, the extractor claw does have engagement. It's kind of hard to see here for the camera, but that extractor claw is engaging the rim of the case and it pulls it back until it hits the ejector and ejects the round. Now we'll just run it quickly a couple more times to make sure this might sound terrible on the speakers of this thing, but I'm just gonna rack this back and make sure that the rest of our rounds cycle through and hopefully we get a last round uh, hold open on the magazine. And there it is. So I would say that this firearm is functioning as it should with the exception of an actual live fire test. And that would be our next step um, in the process. Uh, you know, while we're talking about it, there are a couple potential problems that could have arisen in that last part of the check if the firearm was not successfully, or was not properly functioning. And those might be something like a failure to feed or a failure to extract. At which point, if we were to uh, have a situation where one of these rounds didn't feed as it should. Maybe it got hung up. Now we have some troubleshooting to do and there's a whole bunch of steps, right? I know that I rode the slide down and that's why that's there. But if we had a failure to feed or a failure to eject, we could start our troubleshooting procedures from there. But this firearm checks out and that is our three-step functional uh, safety check. Thank you very much.